Ugh. I'm sick and tired of making all these cool contraptions and finishing all this amazing stuff and having absolutely nothing to show for it. I, I just wish there was some way that I could get some cool stuff quickly. Any ideas, Exotic Toad? Uh -huh. No. Hostile Toad? Ugh, I didn't think so. Hang on. I don't remember you. Loot Box Toad? Oh, you might be exactly what I'm looking for. What do you, what do you got? Uh, we need some gold coins, which I guess I have. And... Uh, oh, oh, here we go. Now we're talking. Welcome to the 21st century of gaming, baby. Legendary loot box. Let's go. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, now we're talking. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial related video, where today we're going to be continuing our command block RPG series. Well, sort of. Uh, it's a bit of a mix of some command basics and stuff like that, because in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to make loot boxes in Minecraft. That's right, we're going to be performing the cardinal sin of adding the world's worst gambling system for kids into arguably the most popular game for kids. YouTube, please let this stay up. <laughs> but all things serious, today we are going to be looking at loot boxes, just like we showed off in the little intro thing. And loot boxes are a cool way to generate your loot tables into the game of Minecraft for your players to get randomized items to reward them or for whatever reasons you want to do. Now, I do want to point out that this video is going to assume that you know at least a little bit about data packs. We are going to go through how to make your own and set it up, but I'm not really going to be doing it step by step. So if you do want to learn more about data packs, there are plenty of fantastic YouTube tutorials out there, so you can go and check those out first. But what we're realistically going to be doing is we're going to be generating our very own loot table and putting it into a loot box. Now right here I have this spawn egg which gives us a common loot box, which I'll explain by the end of the video. But if you go ahead and look, we now have three common loot box chests. And if I open them, you can see in this first one we have some enchanted iron boots, we have some bottle of enchanting, bread, iron nuggets, or iron ingots rather. In this middle one, though, we have more bread and coins. And then on this right one, we have an enchanted helmet, more bottles of enchanting, and more coins. Completely different, despite using the same spawn egg for our common loot box every time. Now, this is really cool because you can set up loot tables with all sorts of random items, named, enchanted, colored, you name it and your players can randomly get them from loot boxes themselves. Now, the way we're going to go over this today is in four steps, although the fourth one is entirely optional and is only if you want to give your players a means of getting the loot boxes in something like Survival Minecraft. The first step is going to be how to actually create a loot table, and if you already know how to do this or you've used programs to do this before, then you can skip ahead in the video. Otherwise, that's what we're going to go over is generating our first loot box. Second, we'll of course be setting up the loot box space in an actual data pack, so we'll go through all the files necessary for that. Third is actually getting and testing your loot box in the game. And then finally, the fourth optional step is giving your players a means to actually obtain the loot boxes via something like a villager trade, like I showed you in the intro. Alright, so without further ado, here's how we make loot boxes in Minecraft. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to want to do is generate our own loot table. Now this is going to be a bit of a dense section, so if you've already done this before, feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, I'm going to try and explain this as easily as possible, and although I had three different loot boxes in the intro, we're just going to work on our common loot box. If you want all three of them, I will have my finished data pack ready for download in the description below or on Pastebin, so you'll be able to grab all of them. But for now, you're going to want to head over to this website up here called miso.github.io forward slash loot table. As I found this is a fantastic tool used to generate loot tables in Minecraft, and what's awesome is it actually gives you the JSON text over on the right-hand side. But for now, we can hide this just to give us a little bit more room, and we can bring it back once we need to see it at the end. And you can see that we are currently using 1.19, which is fantastic. We're using the latest version of Minecraft here. And at first glance, this looks pretty confusing. But all this is is making a new pool of items for us to generate into our loot table. You see, when you open something like a chest in Minecraft, it actually references a couple of files in the game underneath the loot tables folder. Now, there are different subfolders for different loot tables like chests, mob drops, fishing, and stuff like that. But because we're making loot boxes, we're going to be working with the chest loot table. So if you click on this little type right here, a drop down will pop up and allow you to select chest. That's the type of loot table we're going to make. Okay, so now we have to decide what type of items are going to be randomly rolled in our loot table itself. So off the bat, they give you an example item right here. You can see we have an item and it's set to be Minecraft stone. Well, this is a common loot box, so we don't need it to be anything crazy, but we also probably don't want it to be stone. So if you click on this little drop down, once again, a huge list of stuff is going to pop up. Or you can simply delete what's in there and type Minecraft colon 
And for our common loot box, let's focus on adding an iron ingot, just like that. There we go. You can see the little icon has changed here. It's an item, and we have our Minecraft iron ingot. And that's it for adding an item as simple as this. Now, if we wanted to, this iron ingot has a chance to be rolled into our loot table. Now, what do I mean when I say roll? Well, whenever you open a loot table in Minecraft, whether it's from a mob drop or from a chest, the game actually determines how many times to roll that loot table to determine how many items to put into the chest or the mob drop or so on and so forth. Right now at the top, you can see we have a constant of one roll, which means if we opened this chest and we had a big list of items, it would roll from this list once. So it would pick one of the items at random, which is cool and all, but if we have a loot box, we probably want more than one item to be picked out of this list. So for now, I'm just going to set it to four. This bonus rolls tab right here will actually gain additional rolls, so additional items for your end loot box, if the player currently has the luck effect. Now, this isn't something we really need to worry about right now. If you want to give your players luck potions or a means of getting lucky and then getting more items out of their loot boxes, you can add bonus rolls, but we're going to keep it simple. We're not going to touch this right now. Okay, so our first entry was just a single iron ingot with nothing fancy about it. How about for our next item, we change it up a little bit and we have a named tool, something unique that the players can get out of a loot box. So if we wanted to add something new, we can go and we can click this little plus button at the bottom here to add a new entry. And you can see that it starts expanding and might look a little confusing, but it's just a duplicate of what we had up here, down here. So you can see that we are still under the item. We could give it other things, but we're going to stick with items for our loot boxes and for our named down here, why don't we make it an iron pickaxe? Okay. Now, in and of itself, this isn't that great to put in a common loot box because anyone could get this item. So let's give it a name to make it a bit unique, something kind of cool. So the way we do that to actually modify the item is we can give it a function down here with this little plus. So you can see that another menu pops up and we have a whole list of functions, the first one being set count, which we'll get to in a minute. But for now, I'm going to click this and we're actually going to change it to be set name. And you can see that we have a couple of different options. You want to change the entity to be this as we're setting the name of this item and then the actual name itself. So we're going to go ahead and name this Lucky Pick, just like that. And there we go. So now if players roll the pickaxe, they'll get a pick with the name of Lucky Pick. Okay, we don't need to do anything too crazy here, but if we wanted to, we could actually add another function to this pickaxe. If I go ahead and press this plus right here, you can see that we have another function tab underneath our iron pickaxe. Now, just naming it Lucky Pick isn't really going to do much for the player, so why don't we also change this function to be set enchantments? So, for our Lucky Pick here, we can go in and we can choose whatever enchantment we want. I think, because it's a Lucky Pick, we will just give it a level of Fortune. Okay, if you press this plus, you can see that we've now added Minecraft Fortune, and of course we can give it a level, and we will give it a level of 1. Okay, that should be it for our Lucky Pick, but remember we're going to roll 4 items in this, so why don't we go ahead and add a couple more? So if we hit this plus button at the bottom here, we'll have another item pop up. Okay, so we have a resource of an iron ingot. We have an enchanted pickaxe. Why don't we give them a random amount of food as well? Now, because this is just common, I usually use bread as my default here. So I will change this to Minecraft bread. It's always nice to not have to worry about making food in Minecraft if you can just get it for free. But as it stands right now, after adding the bread, it's only one piece of bread. So how do we change it so they get a random amount as shown off in the loot boxes in the intro? Well, if we go back into our functions, you see the default function they give you is set count. Like I previously mentioned, this is the one that we were going to come back to. Now, if we go ahead, we can change this count to be something specific. But if we wanted it to be an interval, we could actually change it from constant to uniform here. And you can see now we have a minimum and a maximum. So if we go ahead, we'll have the minimum bread if this gets rolled to three pieces of bread, but the maximum to seven as a cool incentive to keep opening. Okay, so now we have a piece of bread. It could be three pieces of bread or it could be seven pieces of bread. So far, we have three entries in this loot table of an iron ingot, an enchanted named pickaxe, and random amounts of bread. Okay, now the pool will roll four times. So that generally means you want more than four items so people don't get the same four every single time they open this common loot box. So let's go ahead and add another one here. And now let's go ahead and add an emerald as a rare chance of getting it in this common loot box. So I'll change that to emerald. You can see that changes itself. And as long as we don't set the count, it will default to one. But we want the emerald to be a bit rarer than everything else. So how do we do something like that inside of our own loot pool? 
Well, that's actually where this weight tab comes in, which is present underneath every item that we've added so far. What weight allows you to do is determine the percentage of times that you will get that item. As long as nothing has a weight, everything will be an equal chance. Or right now, because we have four items, there's a 25% chance to get any of these when you roll on the table. But as soon as you set one thing's weight, you're going to have to go through and set every weight. For example, we probably want our bread right now to be the most common. So in order to make this very common, you set the weight to be very high. Because it's our first number, we can choose any number, but I usually like to work off of percentiles, so I will put in 100. What this means is there is, this bread has a 100 weight to it. And now we have to set these other items based on this 100. So I think the next most common right now, at least, should be the iron ingot. So if the bread is set to 100, then let's set the iron ingot to be, let's say, 50. Which roughly means for every two breads that are rolled, because it's 100, you will get one roll of iron ingots. Or 50 to 100. There you go. You don't have to worry about coming up with the math between these, as long as you know higher numbers mean more common and lower numbers mean less common. So let's make this lucky pick something like maybe 25. Or for every four breads that are rolled, you will have one pick that is rolled. And then finally, let's go down to our emerald now that we've set all of the other weights, and let's set the emerald to 10. Or again, for every 10 breads that are rolled because of 100, you'll have one emerald that ends up being rolled. Okay, this all sounds good. Why don't we also go ahead and add a piece of armor into our loot table here? And once again, this is just common, so why don't we actually go ahead and give us some chainmail? Let's give it a chainmail chest plate. And right off the bat, we can set the weight. We want it to be more common than emeralds, and probably more common than the pickaxe too, but only slightly. So let's go ahead and give it a weight of 30. All right, now we don't just want it to be a default chest plate. We once again want to go and add a function, and we'll go ahead and we want to change the enchantments. But this time, something that you can do that's really cool with this tool is instead of setting a specific enchantment, you can actually enchant it randomly, which is one of the functions in here. So if I go ahead and click Enchant Randomly, you can see that we have optional enchantments. If I click on this, we can actually add enchantments that will be in this pool. For example, I'll add Fire Protection, Unbreaking, and Protection. So now, whenever this chest plate is rolled, every single time it will pick a random enchantment from this list to slap onto that chest plate. All right, that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add just two more items here. The first one we're going to add is a simple potion. Now, if you notice, if you enter potions into your loot box, it doesn't actually determine what the potion is. We're going to have to do that ourselves. We want a potion to be fairly common, maybe slightly less than iron, so we'll go ahead and add a 45 weight to it. Once again, we'll have to go down to our functions, and one of the functions down here is actually called Set Potion. So once you do that, you'll have a little drop-down that allows you to pick what type of potion you want it to be. And in our common loot box, we can go ahead and just give a basic Swiftness Potion, or in this case, a Long Swiftness Potion if we want. Now, if we wanted to add more potions, we could actually add them as other items, which you can do, but because this is just a quick example, we'll just stick with that one potion. Now, for a basic loot table that is our common loot table, this is pretty good. We have four rolls, and we have about seven items, which means overall, we'll see a good amount of these, but because the emerald is so rare, we probably won't see that one as much as the others. Okay, so now what do we need to do? Well, we need to pull open this tab that's on the bottom right over here, just like I said before, and there's a couple options. You can actually download the file itself, or you can copy and paste all of the text that shows up in this little box. Either one will work for our next step, just make sure you save this in some way, shape, or form, because we're not going to be pasting it right this second, we got to do something else. All right, now that we've created our loot table, this next step is where things start to get a little tricky and where we start to build our very own data pack. So I'm going to go through this as quickly as I can. The first thing that you're going to want to do is download a default data pack, or you can create the folder structure yourself, but it's usually easier just to have a template. You can find them, I believe, on the Minecraft wiki or loads of other YouTube videos have them in their descriptions. But once you have it and unzip it, it might look something like this. So once we open it, we can see we have a couple of different folders inside the data pack itself one of them called data, and one of them called pack.mc meta. Now this is pretty important. If you click on this, we want to give it an edit. So I'll open notepad here. And you can see there's not actually much in here except for this. Pack format, and the number 10 after it, and description. Now the pack format is the most important part of this piece, because this determines what format of the data pack we're using, and that is determined based on what version of Minecraft you're using. Because I'm making this tutorial for 1.19, the pack format is indeed 10. But if you want to make it for other versions of Minecraft, this number is going to be different. 
if you go to the Minecraft wiki and go to the data pack section, they will have all of the pack format numbers depending on the Minecraft version. But I know, for example, 1.18.2, you would change this number to be 9. And I think 1.18 itself is actually changed down to 8, so on and so forth after that. But because this is for the most current version of Minecraft, we need to make sure that this is set to 10. After that, this description is what's going to show up for our data pack once we activate it, and we can put anything we want. So we'll say this is our loot box data pack, just like that. Now we want to go ahead and make sure we save this file, and we can close out of that for now. Okay, cool. Now we've edited that as much as we need to, so now we can pop into the data folder. And you'll have a couple folders that you want to add here if they're not already here in your default data pack. The first one is Minecraft. You do need this just so the game actually recognizes that there is a Minecraft root folder, even if we don't edit anything in here. Now, there's a two-fold way of doing this. We're going to create our own data pack, which is where our namespace goes down here in just a second. But if you wanted to instead, you could actually make a data pack that edits the default vanilla Minecraft. And if you went into Minecraft, you could actually, there's a whole bunch of folder structures that you could add here, like loop tables and blocks and entities. And if you wanted to, for example, you could change the block entity of dirt to be, I don't know, like iron ore or something with this data pack. And instead of adding that as a data pack, it would change the default inside of Minecraft. But we're not doing that. So just keep in mind, you need this Minecraft folder and it's all case sensitive. But we, what we are going to do is create our own folder here, and we can name it whatever we want our pack namespace to be. So for us, I'm just going to be simple and create the pack loot box, all lowercase, and I'm just going to keep it like that. You can name it whatever you want, but if you want to follow along, I'm going to be using this namespace a lot later. Okay, so we'll head into the loot box. Now, if you downloaded a default data pack, you might also see this folder called functions. For our purposes, we're not going to need it. But just as a quick example, what it can do is you can actually load functions inside of here, which can run commands or run different parameters based on pre-existing functions like the load and tick. For example, this tick happens, as you know, in Minecraft, every tick is 1 20th of a second. So if you put a command in here, it would run 20 times per second. It doesn't matter. We're not doing any of this. So if we go back into here, uh, we do need to add a new folder into here, though, that's separate from function. And that is a folder specifically called loop tables, just like that with the underscore. This is so Minecraft can recognize the namespace. Now, if we go inside of loot tables, we need to determine what loot table we're actually going to edit. And like we said, when we were making our loot table itself, this is going to be the chest loot table. So we'll need another folder and we'll have to name it chest. Okay, almost done. Now if we go inside of our chest, this is where we actually want to paste the loot table that we made earlier. One of two ways, again, you can either create a blank text document, turn it into a .json document by changing the ending, and then paste everything you'd written, or if you downloaded the file itself, you can copy and paste it here. I've downloaded the file, so here you can see it's called looptable.json, but this isn't what we're going to want to keep the name as, so if I click on this, we can actually rename it, and we will make this to be our common underscore chest. You can name this to be whatever you want, just make sure you remember it and it makes sense, especially if you have a lot of different loot tables and you need to organize them. And we'll go ahead and open this. Okay, so here's everything we had written in the actual tool itself, but now it's been compiled into a .json format. Lucky for us, there's not really anything else we have to do here. We can see at the top it is set to Minecraft chest. Make sure this is set to chest, otherwise your loot table won't work. We can see that it's gonna roll four times from this list of entries. Now, what's cool is if you wanted to add or change things, you could actually come in this file itself and add different namespaces or change some of the weight to things. It just won't be as streamlined without using that tool, so you're going to have to get into the nitty-gritty of text formatting with JSON. But this all looks pretty good. So the only other thing that we're going to have to do is actually zip this into a data pack itself. So if we come back to our folder here and we go all the way back to our original default data pack, all you have to do is go ahead and grab these two items and we want to add to an archive. Now it's going to ask you what you want to name it, and for us, we will just name it loot boxes, like that, and it's going to be a zip file. You don't have to use 7-zip, whatever zipping method you have will work. Okay, and now we have this lootboxes.zip. So now we actually have to get this into our Minecraft world save file. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and open Minecraft, we're going to go to single player, and now you can do this in an existing world if you want to, but I'm going to show you the easier method of just creating a new world. So if we go ahead and click the old Create New World button, uh, it doesn't really matter what we'll name it. We'll call it Loot Box Showcase. 
And there's this button right here called data packs. Now, if you've installed a data pack before, you know where I'm going with this. But just in case you haven't, here's how you do it. Click on this data packs, and you can see that we already have a default vanilla data pack. This is the one that comes with Minecraft. But we have this button that says open pack folder. So if we do this, we'll have another folder that opens right here. And all we have to do is we grab our zip file and we drag it into that folder. And you can see there it is. Now, if we go back to Minecraft, you can see, bam, lootboxes.zip. And now we actually want to make sure this is selected, so we'll hit this little arrow right here. And if we press done, the game is going to attempt to load that, make sure it's okay. We'll turn on cheats and we'll set this to be creative mode just for now. And we'll create the world. Okay, now that we're actually in the game, we want to figure out a way to test our loot boxes. So the first way that we can do this, of course, is by setting up a quick command, which will test it in the game. The second way is going to be the optional last step of this video, which we'll get to in a little bit, which will actually give your players a way to get them in survival Minecraft via something like a villager. But for now, you'll notice that nothing is seemingly different, where we hopefully have the loot box loaded. Uh, in case you're working with multiple data packs, you can always use the slash reload command, just to make sure all your data packs are in working order and you don't get any errors. And then the command you want to use to test this is we're going to use the set block command. And we're going to put in some relative coordinates so it's close to us. We'll put in chest and then we need to add some NBT data. So the NBT tag that you can add to a chest is something called loot table. So we'll go ahead and we'll write loot table and we need a set of quotes to talk about the actual namespace. Now, remember, everything in this part is all of the namespaces that you have named yourself. So if they're anything different from mine, you have to make sure you input what you wrote. But for me, I had the namespace of our folder was called loot box. That was the one inside the data folder next to the Minecraft folder called loot box. From there, we need to look inside the loot box folder. And now, as we know, the folder inside of the loot box folder is actually the loot tables folder. But because we're already looking for loot tables, the game doesn't need to know that. So instead, the next one that we need to look for is chest, because we're looking for the loot table of a chest. And then finally, the actual name of the file itself. Now, I called ours common underscore chest. You have to put whatever you named your JSON file right here. I'll go ahead and press enter. And now, when we open the chest, you can see we actually have a random assortment from our loot table in here. We have... Sure enough, four slices of bread that are all randomly spread out. We have one iron ingot, a potion of swiftness, and a randomly enchanted chainmail chest plate. It works, but just to show you that that wasn't a one-off, if I move over here, hello. I will paste and we can enter and look, this time we actually got the lucky pick with fortune one. We have four slices of bread, another iron ingot, and another potion of swiftness. If I go ahead and do it again. Oh, we got absolutely loads of bread. Now, this may happen sometimes, and you may ask yourself, uh, I only put a max of seven bread, right? Well, keep in mind, we have it rolling four times on that same table. So the first roll looks like it was a chainmail chest plate with protection three. The second roll was probably three bread. The third roll was probably five bread. And then the fourth roll was probably six bread. So keep in mind, the items can appear twice depending on how common they are. We'll just do it one more time. Will we get the emerald? No. The an iron ingot was rolled once, an iron ingot was rolled twice, and then two rolls of bread. And then, yeah. Well, the emerald is exceedingly rare, but I promise you it is in there. I can see why this is addicting. Oh, we got the pick again. We got some iron ingots. Oh, fantastic. Hey, there it is. There's the emerald. Amazing. Okay. You now know how to make loot boxes in Minecraft and test them slash spawn them into your world for your players to open. However... We're going to take this an optional step further, but if you're satisfied with just figuring out how this works, then thank you so much for watching. I'll have the usual outro at the end of the video, though, so if you want to skip to that point, you definitely can. Otherwise, we're going to head over to our handy-dandy MC stacker to turn our chest into an actual spawnable entity that players can be given and spawn loot boxes with. So let's go. Okay, so here we are over at MC Stacker, and I'm going to try and make this as quick and simple as possible. So if we go over here, the command that we want to start with is actually a give command. So if we come into this, we need to make sure that we can get our loot table into an actual entity in Minecraft. Now, how are we going to do this? Because we need the loot table is set to a chest. So we need to make sure that it can be in some sort of entity that can drop a chest loot table, right? Well, lucky for us, Minecraft actually has the exact thing we need. The first thing that we need to do, though, is actually give our players a way to summon an entity. And then we'll talk about what that entity is going to be. So the easy way to do that is to give the players a spawn egg. And because we are going to use common, I'm going to color code it brown, silver, and gold. So we'll actually use a villager spawn egg. So it's it's brown for common. Uh, we'll just give this a quick name so players know it doesn't actually summon villagers. We'll name it common loot box. 
Okay, we don't, you can change the colors. We've done this in tutorials before, but I don't need to do that right now. The only other thing that we're worried about is this down here. I don't know if you've known this in MC Stacker, but you can actually change the specific entity that comes out of any spawn egg. So for us, we're actually going to change it from villager to be the entity I was talking about, or a chest minecart. Okay. Now we have a chest minecart, we have a way of actually generating our chest loot table in an entity in Minecraft instead of a block. So I usually just like to make this glowing just to give a sense of wonder to the player once they actually summon it. But how do we get that loot table in there? Well, you see we have this little bar right here to actually set our loot table. So once again, we have to use the namespace that we used when we placed our chest down with a command to actually make sure that this targets the right loot table. So for us, that's loot box, colon, chest, forward slash, common underscore chest. Just like before. And you can see it'll pop up in the top right up here. Make sure this is all set. Now, realistically, you can change a lot more about this. The names, the glowing colors, anything you want. Don't alter any of the actual inventory of the minecart chest itself, though, because it's going to be overwritten by the loot box. So we can go ahead and copy this command. And if we head back into Minecraft, we can go ahead and paste the command. And you can see that we actually get a spawn egg called common loot box. Now, once I put this down, sure enough, it actually spawns the chest with minecart. Now, I could have actually given it a name to hover above it, and you'd probably want to do that yourself. But if you take a look inside the minecart with a chest, sure enough, it's our actual loot table every single time. Isn't that amazing? So you now actually have a spawnable loot box that you can give to players or place down in your world, and they can open. It glows. Uh, you can have them break it afterwards, just like that, and everything will pop out. Fantastic. Now, the other thing you could do, of course, is actually give this spawn egg as a trade to villagers, but I've already made a video covering custom trades and villagers, and because this video is already getting quite long, I won't cover that again. Just simply copy and paste all of the data of that spawn egg into a villager's trade, and you can have them trade for whatever you want the players to give them to purchase loot boxes. But there you go, a semi-quick and easy tutorial of getting loot boxes into Minecraft. It takes a little bit of data pack shenanigans, and if you're making it yourself from scratch, you may notice a couple times that the data pack won't work. So, of course, I will actually leave my own to mess around with in the description of the video below. So you can download that, make sure all of your syntax is correct, or just mess around and change my loot table itself. I'll also include the loot boxes for rare and legendary that I've come up with for you guys to mess around with on your own. But that's just going to about do it for today's video. Remember, if this helped in any way, shape, or form, please leave a like. It really does help the channel out. Remember to subscribe because we have loads more of these videos coming out. Uh, and if you haven't seen the announcements already, I have started a second YouTube channel as well as a Patreon. Those links will be down in the channel below. And speaking of which, I want to give a huge shout out to my new patron, Ashley Bladen, who has started to support the channel as well. Thank you so much for your continued support. Link to the second YouTube channel, which is mostly stream highlights. I've covered it in a post update already. Of course, will be in the description below. If you guys want to see anything else, remember to leave it down in the comments. Let me know if this helped. And of course, the boss tutorial is on the horizon. So until next time, guys, see you!